Hey everybody, Steven here, and today I'm looking at the X1 wireless smart microphone from Meet Summer. So this is the microphone right here. As with all of my microphone reviews, I will be utilizing the microphone for the entire video. So you're not just gonna get a small audio sample, I'm utilizing this for the entire thing. Now I'm gonna make most of the adjustments on the receiver itself. So for instance, right now I have the noise reduction turned all the way up to 14 with plus 10 on the gain. At a certain point though in the video, I am going to add in the adaptive noise reduction so you can see just what this would sound like once you do anything in post. I'll also be testing this with the iPhone because you do get an adapter, not only for an iPhone, but you get one for any type of USB type C device as well. And I like that they've included that with this. But before I get too into the weeds with all of that, I do wanna just cover the overall specifications while I showcase footage of me unboxing this. So inside of the box, you're going to get the charging box, the transmitter, which you get two of these, the receiver, which has a really cool OLED screen on it. Then you have the camera audio cable, the charging cable, the phone audio cable, and then you're gonna get the two phone adapters, you have two windscreens, and then the storage case, and then the user manual. For the technical specifications here, let's start with the transmitter. With this, it weighs 21 grams. It has a 200 milliamp battery. Operating time is eight hours. Charging time is one hour and 10 minutes. For the receiver, it is 35 grams. The battery capacity is 660 milliamps. Operating time is eight hours, and then the charging time is one hour and 10 minutes. And then last, we have the charging box. That weighs 159 grams. It has a 3000 milliamp battery in it. Fully charged with this, you can actually charge all three of these devices. So the two transmitters and the receiver simultaneously up to 1.8 times. So with that, you get the full eight hours of recording capacity. You get to charge it all the way over again. So you get another eight hours and then you get 0.8 on top of that. So we're looking at almost 24 hours of use with this before you need to fully recharge everything. The charging time on the charging box from just completely depleted to full is two hours. Moving on, we have more of the technical specs with the microphone itself. So the mic capsule is a 9.7 millimeter gold-plated omnidirectional capsule. The frequency response is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The max sound pressure level is 110 decibels. The transmission range, 250 meters. I don't know that I can actually test this out. I will do just a length test on this, but at 250 meters, that's 820 feet. That's crazy how far this will actually get you. This is, in terms of range, the longest microphone I've ever used, period. So I'll test to just see how far I can go with it, but trying to set something up to fully test the specifics of the 820 feet, that would be a little bit harder, but I will do a good distance on it. And then wireless transmission is the 2.4 gigahertz, dynamic range, 93 decibels, charging temperature, five degrees to 45 degrees Celsius, which is 41 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Operating temperature is going to be negative 10 degrees to 45 degrees Celsius, which is 14 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So now that I've covered the technical specs, let's get into the display here on the receiver and just talk about some of the features that you get with this, because this is just extremely unique compared to any other wireless lavalier or microphone that I've used. And that OLED screen is really crisp. It looks great. But with this, I'm going to go through the various setting options that you have on this. Now, before I get over to the OLED screen on the receiver, I did wanna showcase really quick the physical buttons that you have on the transmitter and the receiver. So starting with the transmitter, that's gonna be a little bit harder to do, so this may not completely be in focus. My apologies on that. But we have on one side, two buttons at the top. So starting with the first one, you have the link and noise cancellation button. 
Because they are limited on space here, these are essentially dual function buttons. So you have the short press and then the long press in order to enable the different function that you want. Underneath that, you have the power and mute button. And then at the very bottom, we have the charging port. If you don't want to utilize the charging bank with this, maybe you just need to charge it up really quick. You can simply plug it in. I like that they've included that so you have options. On the other side, you have the 3.5 millimeter input for connecting an external microphone. On the top, you have the link and noise cancellation indicator light that's going to be on this side over here. And then on the opposite side over here, you have the power and mute indicator light with all the various functions that you can see there. And then this is that omnidirectional microphone here at the top. You can see it is a very good size. Moving over to the receiver now on the front, you have the touch screen here. On the bottom, you have the expansion port. And then on one side, you have the power button and then the charging port. And then on the other side, you have your audio outputs. So you can see that I actually have this plugged into the camera right now. So that's going to be the receiver. Now let's go ahead and shift over to the touch screen and the various setting options that you have. Looking at the receiver now and the OLED screen here, we have a lot of different features that I want to cover. And then in the user manual, we can look at the various settings and just icons and what they mean on this. But looking at swiping up right here, so this is going to give me the option to adjust noise cancellation. I have this set at five right now, and then I can adjust the mic gain as well. If I click on either of those settings with this, I can then just slide my finger up. And so that's how I would adjust that. Again, this is a touch screen. So let's go ahead and drop that back down to five. And then when I'm done with that, I simply swipe up mic gain. Same thing, I can adjust that all the way up. I'm not gonna do that right now. And then when I wanna go back to the main screen, I swipe down. And you can see, this is reading my audio levels. It's showing me, hey, I'm in a good zone right now. And then in the middle there, the soft, that's letting me know the level of noise cancellation. Soft, and then you can go mild, and then you can go up to strong. Next to that, it shows the gain. If I had both microphones going right now, you would see it like this right here, where it would be split. I would have the left and right, and it would give me the icon there so that I know which one is which. It lets you know the connection strength there with the bars and then the battery life. The very top right-hand corner, that is going to be the battery life of the receiver, so keep that in mind. Uh, looking on the left-hand side, it shows me the track mode, the mode select, and then it would give an icon next to that if I was connected to my phone. And then it'll give a lock screen in the middle. If I press the power button, it can lock this. So just in case you're worried that somebody may accidentally touch this, but let's go ahead and swipe down. Now we have the different settings here, starting with track mode. We have mono, stereo, and then safety. So mono mode is the one I'm currently using. Stereo is gonna be great if you're doing an interview. So you want the left and right channel. That way you can split up the audio based off of this being the left or right microphone. And then it just makes it easier in post to clip out sections of the video where you want to isolate somebody's voice. Safety channel here. I had to email the company to get more information on this. This is a really cool feature. So I'm going to make sure that I just copy and paste their explanation into the description of the video. It's going to be easier to do it that way. But the gist of it is, when we're outside, you'll have people that raise the volume of their voice because the environment is noisy. And because it's noisy, what happens when they raise their voice is you may get bad audio because they're essentially talking outside of the range that this can pick up. So it ends up just being broken audio. This safety mode here, it records in the left and right channel. The left channel is going to be the regular person just talking at whatever gain and volume of their voice, but the right channel, it's going to do this so that it actually records basically at half that volume. It's the, the way it's described with this in terms of safety channel. It's like, Hey, just in case this ends up being broken audio, we got your back. We recorded it at half the gain or half the volume. So when you go into post, you can isolate that out 
and you still have good audio. So it's essentially a backup plan. And I like this. I've not seen this with another product. Very cool with this because I've had that happen where I've recorded something, gone into post to edit, and then all of a sudden the audio is just bad because I was speaking too loud, the microphone was too close, whatever it may be. And so with that, I have to start over. This, you have that at that half volume where you have a backup, which is great. So this is a very, very cool mode. In fact, if it's not an issue, by the way, it'll sound like mono. So for the first portion, the intro portion of this video, I actually had it set on the safety channel and I didn't realize it. And you won't tell the difference between that and mono, which is great. Now, swiping back up here, the next one, we have the mode selection. We have indoor, outdoor, and then noisy. This changes the sound profile here. So now we have plus 15 on the gain, and then you have strong noise cancellation just by changing the mode. So let's go ahead and swipe back, go back to indoor, it will reset everything. So if you have your settings and you click on one of these modes, if you did make an adjustment, like I had this set at five, you wanna make sure that you go back through and you reset that. Scrolling back over, we have the transmitter settings here. So transmitter gain, the noise cancellation, it's essentially just repeating the features if you were to do the bottom swipe. Receiver volume, you can adjust that. Big one here, outside of gain, because we have the record gain here, but the monitor volume, if you needed to turn that up, you could do that. Phone speaker, so this would be separate. I believe this is for you wanting to listen back with playback on a different device. Settings, and then this is gonna be link device, the brightness of the screen, language, and then factory reset. And then the last one is actually just the serial number of the device. And actually let's go back. I thought that was in the same one here. It's the version, sorry. So the version of this, and then the last thing here is going to be the serial device. So that is gonna be it for this. The other thing to cover is just gonna be, you have quick access to the left or right, but it's repeating some of these functions here. But that's gonna be it for the OLED screen on the receiver. So now let's go ahead and shift over and I want to showcase me using this with my iPhone. All right, so I'm shooting on the iPhone 14 Pro Max now. And with this, the AC is going, so I have the noise cancellation set to 10, just to mix up the levels that I'm setting that at. So we'll see how much this actually filters out the noise. Behind the camera is just a road, and with that, there are a lot of cars. So hopefully it's helping to filter some of that out. So far, I've been really impressed with how well it does do that. But again, I don't have this set at the max, I have this set at 10. I'll also showcase some B-roll footage of this attached to my phone in terms of the receiver. So you have two different directions that you can have this. I have this so that the screen is currently pointed at me. So I get to see what my levels are looking like right now as I'm talking. I'm also just holding this to change up. I went from the shirt, now we're gonna hold this. That way we have the, the differences with the position that this is in. I've seen some people, they attach it to their hat. I'm not gonna do that for this video. The thing I like is if I'm holding this, it makes it easier for like street interviews because I can just point the microphone to the other person and then bring it back to me. If you're worried about any pops, which you may hear some in this, I have the tendency to bring the microphone too close to my mouth. You could put the windscreen on this and that will definitely help with that. The test after this though, I'm actually going to showcase distance out uh, in my neighborhood. I'll put the windscreen on that. I don't know how windy it's gonna be when I do check that, but it will eliminate any wind that is out there to a certain point. When you have massive gusts of wind, it, it may not be enough, but in general, with every windscreen that I've used, I've been quite impressed with how much wind noise it does eliminate, so I expect it's going to do the same job with this. It does have these little clips that will actually clip into this, and I like that feature because it means it's going to be very secure on this device, on this microphone. In terms of the receiver though, the thing I like is that the USB-C to lightning port dongle clips into the receiver. So it is held tight to that. So it won't easily fall off because 
as I clipped that in, and I'll showcase footage of that, my first thought was, oh man, that would be a concern as I set this up that I didn't realize I would have until you actually are using it. If I'm moving a bunch with my phone, I would be concerned that it would eventually pop off and potentially damage the receiver, especially that touch screen. So I like the fact that that clips in, it holds it very secure to my iPhone, which is great. Now, other thing I wanted to test in here is distance. So this room is 45 feet. Now this camera is about five feet from the door. So I'm gonna walk 40 feet. I'm gonna check more distance in the neighborhood, 820 feet. I looked it up, it's like 273.33 yards. So almost 300 yards, which would be three football fields. It's basically two full football fields and then another three quarters. That ends up being about 0.15 miles. So the again, the longest transmission distance that I've seen or used with any type of wireless microphone to date. So I've, I've used another one that was like 600 feet, but this one blows that out of the water. But let's go ahead and walk back here. Because the other thing that I want to check, if my back is to my phone, am I picking up on this still? And is the quality still good? Because that's the other big thing is you don't want it so it's cutting in and out. And I've used some other wireless lavaliers that do that. So now we're all the way at the back wall here. And you should still be able to hear me quite well. So and this is with my iPhone, right? So you get great audio quality with your phone or obviously with your camera, but for any content creators out there, this is gonna be a big one because that subtle improvement, and I wouldn't even call it subtle, if, if you can get something that has a big improvement to your audio quality like this device, I think it makes all of your content better because there's nothing worse than you're trying to watch somebody's video and if they're recording with their phone and they do happen to move further back and you're like, I can't even hear what you're saying, that's an issue. With this, it's not gonna be an issue. So you just get to up your game in terms of the audio quality, which improves the video quality overall. So this has been testing this with the iPhone here. They just announced the 15s for the iPhones. That has the USB type C finally. So although this does have the lightning port adapter, if you do get the new phone, you can utilize the USB C to USB C adapter with this as well. So regardless, you are covered with being able to attach this to your phone. With that being said though, let's go ahead and jump over now. Let's do the distance test back with the DSLR camera in my neighborhood. All right, this is going to be the last portion of the video here where we're going to test the distance with the microphone and how far it can go. Now, I'm not going to do the 820 feet with this, and I've actually already recorded this, but I had some issues with the audio. At about 80 foot, it actually cut out, and then about the, it started to cut out, and then at the 150 foot mark, it actually just completely cut out, and then I went 300 feet not knowing that. Now, I reached out to the company, showed him my footage. I was like, hey, what's going on? Not quite sure, maybe it's something that I'm doing. And it was, I was holding on to the lavalier. So right now it's actually hooked onto my shirt so that there's no disruption between the signal. It's just direct to the receiver. Me holding on to it, my fingers are covering all of those internal components. So if you have a disruption to the signal, it's, it's going to break up at a certain footage. For me, it was about that 80 foot mark that I was holding it. You started to hear it break up. And then again, about the 150 foot mark, it just completely broke up. I was actually turning my back too, because I wanted to check that. And again, if I turn my back, it's disrupting the line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. So you're just disrupting that signal. 820 feet, that is in perfect conditions, right? You have no outside, influence on the signal, right? There's not walls that you're going through. You don't have other electrical components, anything like that. So that is the furthest that they could do in a lab. When we're looking at, hey, I'm outside, what can I achieve? They said about 150 meters, which is pretty comparable to the other devices that I've used in the past, which is a good distance. Like that's uh, far, like I don't personally need that far in terms of the distance between my device and the recording microphone but you may some people out there may 
If you need something beyond that, you're probably gonna want, want to look at a different product, okay? So outside right now, this is across the street from my house. I do have the windscreen on. I will showcase footage of me clipping that in. I like the windscreen here because it has two little hooks on it that clip in versus some of the other ones that I've used in the past where it's a rubber piece and you have to kind of fold it over and most of the time it just pops off. So very easy, simple to use, and it does a really good job. So we have wind that we're going to be working with here. It does a great job. I've checked this multiple times. It, for the most part, filters all that wind out. I have this in outside mode also. So that is soft on the noise cancellation, and then it does plus 13 on the decibels in terms of the gain. I'm actually surprised it didn't do higher on noise cancellation because it's outside and usually, like right now the crows are going to have other birds that are making a bunch of noise. Um, I'm surprised with that, but Every time I've checked it in post, it, it sounded decent, right? You may hear a car go by or a dog bark, but most of the time it's, it's filtering that noise out pretty well. And you could always adjust this on your own also. If you were outside, you put it in outside mode and then you just adjust noise cancellation and you could put it all the way up to max if you wanted to. But I'm gonna start backing up now and I'll probably go 80 to 100 feet with this and we'll just look at the signal at that distance and then i'm going to talk about what i like and any potential downside with the product but backing up now i'm not going to turn my back because again that's going to disrupt the signal but we're getting this is probably getting close to 40 feet i'm going to keep going keep going hopefully don't trip on anything and when i recorded the first time it was sunny it is overcast i'm trying to beat the rain today that may have an impact on performance. Just there's more to deal with with the weather. Man, this has probably got to be a good 100 feet at this point. So personally, just the distance looking at this, I would never record this far from the camera. But for those people out there, if this is something that you do, like this is easily going to handle that distance. So 150 meters, what is it? three feet right so i mean you could probably get two three four hundred feet just undisrupted signal if i start turning my body away from this these are things that you're gonna have to be mindful of that's got to be something that you pre think of strategize hey am i going to be moving around a lot am i going to turn my back to the camera is there going to be a wall that is in between me or some type of structure between me uh, with the microphone and the receiver on the camera. How many people are walking in the shot? That's, gonna, that's a, something that's blocking the transmission signal. Cars going in front of it, all these things. Again, you have to think about that and plan. 60 to 80 feet, if you're facing the camera, not holding the microphone in your hand like I was, I don't think those are really gonna be a huge issue. You start backing up further than that, we're getting like, 100, 150, 250 feet, you really have to start thinking about these things. Because again, at that point, you're probably losing the signal and now you're gonna check it in post and you're not gonna have audio. It's gonna be cutting in and out. You're not gonna like that. So as an overall package with this, this is my favorite wireless lavalier. I think they've done a great job. I like the carrying case that this comes with because you get to store everything. It actually looks really nice. I like the charging case holds everything. Most of the time you're getting a charging case with these. I would consider this a really good like mid tier wireless lavalier because I can get a lot more expensive than this. And in terms of the price, I haven't talked about that yet. I think this is a good mid tier price for all the upside that you're getting with this. I'm actually kind of surprised it doesn't cost more. I think they nailed it with the price on this one. So I've used other ones in this same price range. They don't have all these features. That's the big thing with this. Like the OLED screen, you don't find that on a lot of the other devices. You find a screen, not an OLED screen. So the OLED touch screen you have on there. And a lot of the times these other ones, they may not even have a touch screen, but this one having the touch screen, and the big one, the, the, the noise cancellation here, I don't find that on a lot of the other devices, or if it has it, it's either on or off. You don't have a lot of control. You don't get to adjust that. 
the gain. You don't get all the levels with the gain. It's either plus 10 or it's off, that's it. So you get more control. And I think that's one of the big upsides with the product is more control over the audio. That other safety feature, that's a huge one. I, I Once they told me what it was, I was like, that's so cool. I wish more devices had it because there's been so many times that I've personally recorded something and the audio was messed up. I had to start over. So that's always a pain. And so the features here are plenty and they've really created not only a great overall product, but something that I've not used with the wireless lavaliers. I've used a bunch, like I said, in the past, but they don't have all these features. And so that's just a huge selling point. Downside, I really don't have any standout negatives with this product and that's awesome. I don't like coming down on products when they do have a feature that, or, or specific, portion of the product that's just not what's advertised or it's not that great whatever it may be that i have to say hey that's just a negative in terms of the gray area i cover this with a lot of videos these are things you may or may not care about i think it's really just the distance right if you need more distance if you need more distance than this 100 feet right and you're like, well, I, I don't want to really worry too much. People are going to be walking in the shot. I need to be at this distance. And not only are they going to be walking in the shots, but cars are going to be passing by, or I'm going to have things that are going to be disrupting the signal. I need something more powerful. You're looking at something that's going to be way more expensive anyways. So you're going to be in a different category than this for content creators, people that, again, maybe you're doing something on the street, but you don't need huge distance like people like me like the youtube channel this thing is to me a really good mid mid-tier price i think they nailed it but it's like top tier with the audio the adjustments that you can make and then the quality of this so gray area yeah the distance is an 820 feet but 100 150 250 feet you're gonna be fine all right think about and plan ahead with those disruptions to the signal and if you need that consistently consistently like again you're gonna have to look at a different product if it's not it's like hey maybe once on a blue moon I'll, I, I'll do a longer shot like this if you plan ahead you'll be fine so they've just created like i said a very solid product here and this is by far my favorite wireless microphone to date Everything about this is just really, really top tier at a great price point. And I was actually surprised when I saw it because I was expecting it to be a lot more. So they nailed it with that. So that's gonna actually be it for this video. Hopefully I've showcased enough different scenarios with this. It'll give you a good idea of what the audio sounds like with this and the things that you can adjust and tweak. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I will make sure to answer that for you there. I will have a link for this in the description if you wanna pick it up. And if you like the video, hit the like button for me as it helps the channel out. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, let's do a bonus check. I'm just gonna throw this in here. If I turn my back right now, can you hear me with the audio? And we're a little over 100 feet at this point. Can you hear me? If I turn back this way, we're gonna go past this 100 foot mark. Let's keep going and keep going and keep going. Just wanna test this out at this point. I don't know how far I'm gonna go. This is still direct line of sight, by the way. Pretty dead on, I'm a little off. If you veer way off to the side, by the way, that impacts signal. So if I veered way off to the right or the left, it's not a straight signal anymore. So, okay, uh, my guess this is this has got to be close to 180 to 200 feet in terms of the distance. It's a good chunk away. Again, I don't know that I would ever film something this far. I'm going a little bit further. I'm getting close to the ridge line of the wooded area here all right so this is i'm gonna say 200 feet this is 200 feet here's a sample of what the connection is going to be like at 200 feet and i'm assuming if i turn my back i'm going to go ahead and do that you're going to start to get cut out because now this is being blocked by me i'm going to start to turn back this way and we should regain the connection if it's working at the 200 feet here so that's going to be the test on footage I can't really go much further than this, but again, incredible distance with this, with this working and 
coming back, moving forward, if there was any disruption, you would hear that it slowly clears up as you get closer and closer and you just regain that good connection between the transmitter and the receiver.